Welcome to the world of the Navara R, where I have made a terrible mistake. I thought it was all going quite well because I managed to get the uh, manifold in, but I didn't bolt it up um, completely tightly yesterday and thinking that uh, that would give me more room, but it hasn't. What it has in fact done is bring the manifold closer to the turret that they've welded in here. So if this is a normal Navara, it'll probably fit quite nicely, but because it's not, we have a problem where this pipe is now touching the strut. This is a gigantic design flaw on my part. So I'm just trying to work out how to fix it. This is a disengage smug mode. Disengage smug mode. Engage um, sad mode. So now I've got to remake two of the pipes up. But, but there really isn't very much room to move it though. There isn't. It's easier for them just to move the turret. <laughs> if, if, they, if they would let me, it'd be much easier just to manoeuvre the bottom of the turret because it won't actually affect anything yeah. at all. But I don't think they're going to let me do that and I'm going to have to try and make the exhaust differently. Again, it's only got the 86 different fit up that I've tried so far. So I've finished tacking up the exhaust manifold, the, well one side of the exhaust manifolds um, and now I'm going to put, we're going to do it in two pieces because of the space constraints, I don't think you'll be able to easily fit the manifold in in one hit so I'm going to break it up into two pieces and join them together using some V-bands. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to weld that onto there, make a jig point off of here using a head flange the head flange jig plate for head flange. Um, this is so I can keep this in exactly the same place. I can break off all of these pipes, polish them up, and then weld them and then reattach them back in again. the first part of the exhaust manifold bolted to the car. The next part is to do an up pipe that goes from the first part of the manifold to the turbo. And that's what I'm going to do now.
so we have, you might have seen from the last bit of the video, me positioning the turbo. The turbo, I believe, is in the position that we're going to keep it in. And I have come to this position um, by doing many things. One of which is making sure that it didn't hit the bonnet. I could close the bonnet, but then you wouldn't be able to see it. It's, it's really difficult. I have tested this by closing the bonnet. But uh, let's set this. You're on the other side of this. Set the height of the bonnet there. Um, so there's a good good distance between that and the bonnet does actually curve up as well so there's even more room there um, than here so that comes out so the bonnet's actually about that high off of the back of the turbo so there's plenty of room there. Um, it's so far over this way because whoever's doing the boost pipes which is not us unfortunately is going to have to come out of here and head this way somewhere um, to make the boost pipes off of the intercooler. So a bit of pre-planning and thoughtfulness on their side. I hope they appreciate that, whoever it may be. Um, and the reason the turbo's up here in the first place is because we were told to put it up here, basically. The turbo had to be as high and visible as possible on both sides. So, um, so there you go. Next part that I'm going to do is fit one of these wonderful little gadgets here which is called a wastegate and this one is made by TurboSmart. Now we use TurboSmart in all of our products. They're, they're designed to work with TurboSmart products and the reason we use TurboSmart products is because there's no question for the open market TurboSmart make the best wastegates you can buy. There is no, there's no two ways about it. Their, their flow is far greater than all of the other wastegates. Uh, the compact design means that it can fit in most places that other wastegates can't. Their heat management is far superior to every other uh, wastegate on the market at the minute, so which is why we always use turbo smart wastegates. Someone's beeping the horn outside and they agree with me. So to fit this turbo smart wastegate, well, I'm going to show you the position of the turbo smart wastegate in the first place. It is going to go around about there and the reason it's going to go around about there is because they want the screamer pipe to come out down here when they eventually bring me a body kit so that I can work out where it can go um, and also it gives me a good place to come off of the pipe at a nice swooping angle so that the wastegates get as much gas as possible so they can do their job properly and that is pretty much it to be honest. I'm just going to go and fit this up now. Well, I'm ready, I'm done. For one side. Finished one side completely. Uh, apart from some bracketing, which I'm going to do a little bit later once I've got the other side on. But uh, here she is. Turbo is in position. Pipe work is made up for one side. I did The reason I did all one side to start off with was obviously just to make sure that it was going to work and then I had a solid plan. There's no point in getting halfway through making the other side if one side doesn't work. So uh, I did the whole of one side and now I'm going to move on to the other side. So we have uh, finished positioning the turbos and making the up parts. So the manifold section of this project. The manifold section of this project is finally finished. It's only taken just over a week to do. Um, so we, despite the two Obviously, uh, banks being slightly offset, as they have to be with a V, um, v engine, the, we position the turbos that they are exactly level, and this is just purely for aesthetics within the engine bay, and it makes everything else a little bit easier to fit. So, that's really about that, apart from the wastegates. So the wastegates we've positioned uh, here and here. They've got some normal wastegates on there at a minute, normal Turbo Smart Gen 5. 45s and I believe that possibly at some point they're going to put some EWG 45s on there so I've left enough room for them to do that um, that's really um, pretty much it apart from I can't do the screaming pipes at the minute because they still haven't provided me with a body kit so I have no idea where they can come out yet I have a rough idea but I might have to guess that a bit later so next on the list of things to do is to make the downpipes. Just one thing to do that. Okay, ready. 
So I've just started making the down pipes. This is the first section. I say just started, it's been a couple hours so far. And it looks fairly simple. It's just a couple of bends in the minute. Well, I still haven't finished yet. Um, but I just wanted to show you that this side is particularly wiggly, even though it looks straight. I don't know if I can get the camera in there to look down. So we're heading down, right, up, up, from up, up. Yes, there we go. So I'm heading down that gap there, which looks like a reasonably straight line. However, when we're doing it, it's made out of this three and a half inch tube, it is far too close to everything to have a straight line. So it's gonna end up being a bit wiggly. There's another little wiggle on here before it goes down to the bottom. Um, and we have done it straight from three and a half inch immediately out the back of the turbo. The outlet of the turbo is actually three inch. We stepped it straight up into three and a half inch using this little cone here. And then I did this side first because this side's much harder than the other side. Well, we always say that, and then the other side turns out to be harder. But th that side looks easier, so I started with the harder side first. So I'm going to get the rest of this done, get it welded up. We were going to put the GoPro down there, but you can't really see anything, so you just have to deal with me showing you a little bit to so go along, I'm afraid. Sorry. So I've finished both of these downpipes, or tacked up both of these downpipes, just the pipe work. Um, side of things so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to weld the whole thing together and then we're going to put the brackets on and the reason I don't put the brackets on before is because when you weld such a large piece of metal this is quite a lot of shrinkage involved in it so hopefully I've built that in well enough to the to the tacked up version so that when it shrinks up it will sit nicely in the place exactly where I want it and then I can put the brackets on and it will stay firmly in that position that is the goal ladies and gentlemen whether that actually happens i have no idea but we'll, we'll find out no it should be i mean it's all it's all count there we've been doing this for some while we know what we're doing <laughs> So now we've got the down pipes in place and uh, all bolted and mounted up. It is time to do the undercut. Now we were gonna put an X pipe underneath the bottom of this, but we're not gonna do that anymore. And the reason we're not gonna do that anymore is because this prop shaft is far too low. So the, bottom, the chassis rails of the, the truck, as you can imagine, are quite low now after all the modifications that have been done. Um, and the prop shaft is as also quite low so there isn't actually three and a half inches below that to give enough room anyway um, for the prop shaft so we could do some wiggling over and in between and, and stuff like that but to be honest there's no real benefit for turbocharged cars to having a x pipe post turbo so other than sound so there's no there's no real reason to do it plus it's extra weight so we're going to uh, so we're going to not do an x pipe on this and just do two straight pipes from here straight to the back and from this one straight to the back and they're going to come out around about here if we ever get the body kit delivered in time fingers crossed
Hello, pardon. Finished fitting. This is the exhaust done as far as we can do it for the time being. We didn't get the body kit in time, unfortunately, so we couldn't go all the way out the side. So we just decided to get as far as we possibly could until we had those points, because we can't finish it without those points, unfortunately. No, it's going to have to come back, but this is as far as we have got. Exhaust systems. Very solid mounted, we've got rubber. There's uh, six rubber mounts in total, uh, three on each side. That should keep it nice and stiff and supported. So whatever crazy things they get up to in this thing, it hopefully should hold itself together, but it will hold itself uh, There's not much else to say about this pipe other than it nicely misses everything and it's three and a half inch pipe and it flows really well. 